All right, so let's discuss the contract signing that I think is a little high. And I'm going to say that, and that's going to upset some people who are fans of Mika Zibanejad. I like Mika Zibanejad. Five-year, $26.75 million contract. Is he a $5 million player? I, I have my doubts at this point that he is. The term is is again and this is my age showing i, I like three-year contracts but that's just me uh players want more long-term uh certainty in terms of where they're going to be playing and what they're going to be getting paid for playing there and uh Zibanejad gets five years and 26.75 million five million dollars a year for mika Zibanejad. um and and again it's not that i'm trying to say anything bad about the player or about the gm for getting the deal done it just it's a lot of money it really is uh, so Benajad's a good player. So when you look at, at him stats-wise, um, he has two 20-goal seasons to his to his credit. He had 14 goals last year in 56 games. Projected out, he would have been a 20-goal scorer with the Rangers as well. So five point some million dollars gets you a 20-goal scorer now. Just seems like a lot of money. I know he's 24, and I know there's still potential for growth, but I don't see much more than 50 points out of the guy. Um, it, it's just, it's it's one of those contracts I look at and I say, okay, well, I, I guess. Um, and I like, and again, I'm going to say this straight up. I like Mika Zibanejad. It's it's a, a great story. Um, I don't remember which, mag, which uh, issue I had it in, but it was in one of my hockey news magazines was a story on the, the life of Mika Zibanejad before he became an NHLer and on his way to being drafted and what his family went through and, and how, it, how it worked in terms of him becoming a prospect and all that. Great stuff. Great story. And, and now his family is, is set. You know, he's set. And five years, five and five point some million per year. So the question I have for you guys is that high for Mika Zibanejad? And I'm asking particularly Rangers fans and Ottawa fans. Remember now when Zibanejad got traded out for Broussard last year, I kind of said, well, I think the Rangers are getting the better of the deal. With this kind of contract, I think it's a soft because Broussard, to me, is just as good as Zibanejad. And, you know, uh, now you're not even talking about money you're saving if you're the Rangers. So... You know, I, I guess I guess we'll see what happens from here. And yeah, actually, when I look at the numbers, Broussard makes a little less money than Zibanejad. So there's that. Uh, people had also asked me to talk about Brian DeMoulin signing again in Pittsburgh. Uh, six years, $4.1 million a year. Seems high, but he's a very solid defensive defenseman. Um, Pittsburgh's got a guy in DeMoulin that... Uh, has been developed properly and apparently he rebroke his hand during the playoffs a few times the guy's definitely a warrior uh, so for that reason alone i think it's a good signing he's got certainty in his contract and the penguins have certainty on the blue line uh, i i don't think he has any more offensive capability than what he's shown so far but keep in mind uh, some of my favorite defensemen through the years have been guys like willie mitchell and rod langway and and uh, Mike Ramsey would qualify in that too. Uh, guys who don't necessarily score the tons of points, but they're really, really good at what they do. And DeMoulin definitely has potential in terms of... I don't necessarily see him as top two, but he's definitely top four, and it's an underrated top four that Pittsburgh has. And if Latang's healthy, DeMoulin's there long-term, uh, Pittsburgh has one of the best defense cores in the league, and it just gets that much stronger. I'll also throw in here uh, Mark Streit signing a one-year contract with Montreal. Good move. The question, of course, and TSN even has it up, is this, does this mean Markov isn't coming back? For me, Markov wasn't coming back anyways. I don't think Streit makes a difference with that. I think Markov is done as a Montreal Canadian, and considering he hasn't been signed by anybody yet, he may be done in the NHL. So... Uh, I don't know if Markov would consider going back to the KHL to finish out his career or any... And I say back, I don't even know if he ever played in the KHL. I'm just saying, go and play in the KHL. And, uh, 
you know, maybe he would, maybe he wouldn't. Only Markov knows for sure. But um, for Strait, it's a one-year deal. It's a good move. There, there's no harm in this. There's no uh, chance of this blowing up in Montreal's face because it's only a one-year contract. And it doesn't change my prediction. That's It's not a contract that I look at and say, oh, no, I have to change my predictions. Um, and one last contract for me to mention. Robin Lehner gets a one-year extension for $4 million. So they kick that rock down the road a little bit. Um, we'll see if... Uh, if Laner's one-year contract means that if Buffalo, if Buffalo has a rough season, does he become a rental at the deadline? So, uh, if if one of Buffalo's other goaltenders kind of steals the limelight, I'm looking at you, Mr. Johnson. Uh, does does Laner then become expendable? Lehner, I got so used to saying Laner, and now it's Lehner. Whatever. You guys know who I mean. Uh, it, does Robin Leonard become expendable to the Buffalo Sabres? If if the Sabres get off to a rocky start, the rocky middle, does Buffalo consider moving him out? And I, what I mean is that if, if his stats aren't you know up there and if Johnson's out playing him and if Ulmark's playing really well in the minors, do they consider making a move with Lehner, or Leonard? Because it's a one-year contract. There's, there's no, while Sabanajad and Demulin got job uh, certainty, uh, Leonard got one year. And, you know, there's some uncertainty there. Certainly, if Leonard has a really good year, Leonard can cash in big time next summer. But we'll see what happens with that. So let me know what you guys think. Uh, I also had a comment, somebody asking me to comment on uh, Reed Boucher signing, re-signing with Vancouver. It's Boucher's a, a, a decent bottom six with potential for more scoring kind of guy. I There's way too many forwards in Vancouver. Some guys are going to have to clear waivers, and Boucher could potentially be one of those guys. Um, we'll see what happens in training camp. We'll see if he outplays some other guys going for roster spots. But there's too many forwards and not enough spots on the roster. So Boucher's one of those... Maybe he makes it, and maybe he ends up going somewhere else. So let me know what you guys think in the comments section below. And um, again, I would have gone more into detail with Zibanejad, but there really isn't a whole lot else to tell other than a $5.35 million cap hit for a guy who scored 20 goals twice. To me, seems uh, like a lot. It just seems like a lot to me, and maybe I'm wrong. And let me know why I'm wrong in the comments section below. Hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. And thank you so much for watching. I'll talk to you guys again soon.